Hi, this is Nathan. Welcome to the Wadfam Chalk Pod. Hi, this is Andrew Acebo. I can't think of anything I'd rather do than hang around with you for a time of humor and analysis. Then again, getting a fresh block of Gouda cheese is exciting to me. Anyway, welcome back to the Wad Fam Chalk Pod. There's so much I need to do. <laughs> yeah, you, you have stuff going tonight? Yeah, I gotta write a paper. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. At least you're getting an extra hour tonight. JK? Nope, hour less. Hello and welcome to the Wad Fam Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver. And I'm Andrew Sabo. And we're here to talk about episode 277, It Happened at Four Corners. Yeah! That was a terrible prospector impression. I'm so sorry. Can we start over? No, no. I think that we got to keep it and double it. That's fair. Fair enough. I'm going to, that's going to be the new, every time you swear this episode, I'm just going to dub that over. <laughs> All right. I'll be sure to swear a lot, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Chalk Squad, what is my average amount of swearing? <laughs> like, I feel like I'm... It's like, As the it, person who four? censors the episode, no, it's way lower than that. Okay. Uh, two? One? Yeah, I, I would say, like, I don't think you ever do more than two in an episode, and probably mm-hmm. most are zero. That's fair. Okay, Like, cool. you slipped one in front... Anyways, yeah. I don't know why we're doing this. Talking about but, swearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pass the henny, the chicken mm-hmm. that is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, this is an episode. Boy, howdy, is it? <laughs> it is. Um. It's part of the Eugene and Bernard road trip that we're covering as part of the the mega arc of mm-hmm. of all things Eugene. Um. During this era, and yeah, it's it's an episode. Uh unsurprising to me written and directed by phil lawler oh boy (laughs) it is um as we've been discovering throughout the road trips episodes that i thought i had listened to that i very clearly have not oh really oh yeah every time we hit one of these i'm like this is gonna be one i remember and then it isn't (laughs) that's actually really great i love that i'm Okay. I'm like I have en- I think I have enough episodes of Odyssey that involve a car in yeah. some way yeah. that I just assumed those were all the road trip arc. Yeah. They aren't. No, no, there's Odyssey knows its market and that is people in cars. <laughs> <laughs> so there's well, so many episodes. Yeah. It's the primary pre- people who listen. Mhm. But yeah, this is it it's yeah, it's an interesting episode. It has just Eugene and Bernard as cast members plus uh Pete Renaday comes in to do double time as Logan and the police officer. Logan Smiley. You cannot Correct. forget the Smiler himself. The Smiler. <laughs> Go back to the old neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. It just yeah, it, it, it this is this is so this is Pete Renaday's first episode, mm-hmm. um, but he goes on to be a big Odyssey like shows up in a lot of episodes. He's mm-hmm. Owen in the Pokenberry episodes we oh, covered, okay, yeah, yeah, and he's Mister Sneed, okay, in, in the Novacom, yeah, like, yeah. Alaska episodes, yeah. um, and yeah, and pops up in a ton of other stuff. Um, but this is this is his first appearance. Very uh, he, cool. He's also like a, a regular voice actor, but just mostly like background vocals on like TV shows and video mm-hmm. games. So not a lot of like named characters. That's but fair. he provides a lot of voices. Has you know yeah, one hundred fifty plus IMDb credits. Like yeah, like the man's no no slouch. But Clearly nothing talented. Where I'm like right yeah. Um, hey, I know that guy. Right, and he he pulls it off as I don't know if there is. I mean, I'm sure there. I'm sure there are. But like, as far as an Odyssey episode that has three characters, that does feel crazy. Or like yeah. three voice actors. Yeah, rather. three. Voice and there's actors. technically a fourth because I think well, Bob Hoos maybe provides. Bob like, Latrell voices the radio DJ at the very beginning. There it is. <laughs> That's it, like, though. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, I think that this has got to be at somewhere in the record books as, like, one of the sparsest voice acting. I think that it's more so a credit to Dave Madden and Will Ryan with how well they do in this episode. Correct. Correct. They're overcoming a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. So there, there's quite a bit of of context for this episode that I can I can provide from both the official guide and the complete guide. Please do. Um, but I never really thought about it. But it is funny that the complete guide is the briefer of the guides that I own. <laughs> like of of the three. Yeah. That I own. The the, the complete is the, the complete shortest is one. The, is the least complete. Um. Although is it. Is it dated? Does it have, like, complete until... No. No, it does not. So, yeah, no. It's just the shortest. So, one of the big things... So, they were initially in their road trip, you Mm -hmm. know, whatever. They're trying to get from Illinois to... California. um, San Diego. California. San Diego. And so, they... Yeah, they they were always going to have, like, a desert adventure episode. Mm -hmm. But for a long time, the pitch for the episode was that it was going to be a crossover with the focus on the family video series the last chance detectives what so that's actually bonkers for those of you who don't know the last chance detectives was a like three videos that focus released on the 90s about like kids in the southeast u.s Mm. or southwest u.s solving mysteries i think it was i thought it was more southeast i thought it was like louisiana no, or something. no, no, no. Uh, no it, is, it is the desert okay it's the desert yeah they fa- f- focus famously like purchased an airstrip where they shot all of the stuff interesting like huh. it was a wild time but <laughs> okay <laughs> but that show later gets rebooted mm-hmm. as a radio show yeah that w- i have been teasing doing since like day one of this podcast for sure and maybe someday we will uh, if you haven't listened it, you, you should but like the the f- that episode when they that it's not a radio show it's like a it's like a standalone audio drama yeah that focus yeah. produced but it does cross over with Odyssey. Yes, yeah. Like, the whole setup starts with Jason. Yeah. And so it is, yeah, it's just funny to be like, even back here, we were going to do that. Mm -hmm. But also, they were, the the working title when it was going to be a Last Chance Detectives crossover was Going Forth Hmm. without the U, so oh, just like going forward. forward. Yeah, yeah. Like going forth. Go forth and no right. better man. But that breaks the naming convention of them all being numbers. Yeah. Because it's an audio yeah. pun and not like it doesn't work in text. Yeah. And it does no, just bother me a little no, bit. No, it works in text. It doesn't work in audio. <laughs> forth, forth. No, that, I mean, that does work in audio. Kind, I, I don't know. It, it's weird. Okay. I'm just going to say it's weird. It, it is weird. It is weird. <laughs> yeah. As par for the course for a lot of what Focus does. <laughs> but, but yeah, the – and I think it's interesting. We talked, I think, the previous episode about how they were going to get Dr. Dobson in and mm-hmm. then didn't. And this episode, they're like, we're going to do a Last Chance Detectives. And then they don't. <laughs> like, it's just like – because it truly feels like we're in the Wild West where Odyssey is still trying to figure out what it is. Yeah, what are we going to do? And they're like, can we cross over with our other stuff? Yeah. Well, they, we... they want to build a cinematic right. or a uh, more, I guess, airwave universe, <laughs> like a radio drama universe. Yeah, and because of Last Chance Detectives and what McCusker does with the Passages book series and the eventual audio adaptations, they do beat Marvel to the punch as far as fleshing out a, a world. <laughs> a cinematic sort of universe. And by that, I mean they just steal the sitcom thing of we just create spinoff shows. Yeah, yeah. Well, just all the spinoff shows, because we have one show that's successful and right. is incredibly long-running. <laughs> right, right. But, right, I mean, that's how, you know... A franchising works. <laughs> right, right. So it's not... I'm not trying to be like, hey, they invented this. It's just yeah. funny to see them, like, using this textbook in a time before cinematic universes were all Oh, yeah, rage. no, no, no. Yeah, but then also, over. they have dropped it, like... 
like completely they, completely like yeah. they're they're no longer i yeah. well even even the uh delineation between cl- the club adventures and like the radio adventures and everything is pretty clear like they have characters that come in, in club adventures that don't come in in radio adventures and so on and so forth like it it does feel like they've gone farther away of be like trying to square off things within a central timeline as opposed to like expanding the universe and creating new characters yeah yeah but you know maybe maybe you know maybe maybe we can create our own odyssey spin like i you know we go to look, the burning rubble of focus on the family right. Phil Lawler, <laughs> hand me give give me money and yeah. i'll create oh, yeah. a I'll, we'll create an in-universe podcast for sure like, we can just play oh that would be fantastic <laughs> 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 yeah, no, we made that joke before about just yeah. being the crying Brian Dern show, right. essentially. Right. We can be the the podcast that the, the the ruffians listen to, and then they've got to go talk to Wit about their weird feelings of doubt. <laughs> yeah, like right, like as as a podcast, our trajectory has definitely been like we started out as candid conversations, and we did just become crying Brian Dern. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, it, I, I hate that that works so well. <laughs> uh, we've gone back and forth, too. I, I, like, yeah. I think that we probably started out, yeah, yeah, definitely more candid conversations, for sure. <laughs> but, al- almost like BTV. Like, we're, we're like, spoon-feeding messages to, to the audience in those first 20 or so episodes. <laughs> maybe it's not 20. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we were just kids' radio. Pro- we were OT Action News. <laughs> basically i mean kind of <laughs> kind of yeah what if we give you a play-by-play of these episodes with please. our commentary please yeah. oh no <laughs> we that... are just ot action news <laughs> without brink chetley or whatever his name is no you you nailed it oh dang unbelievably that Woo! is his name <laughs> brink chetley <laughs> oh. boy that is a name meant to be said together and quickly yeah <laughs> Oh man, but uh, yeah. So, uh, is there any I, other context we need to cover? There's some other context, but I think it's stuff that I'm going to get into as we continue. Okay. Through the show, fantastic. I think that that would be more beneficial. Yeah. Um. So, so we start out with, yeah. Uh, would we say Bob Luttrell as mm-hmm. the radio host? He's mm-hmm. just in the car. He's talking. He's like, you know, this next song coming up is by Whalen Whalen, which mm-hmm. is kind of a good joke. Yeah. Um, and then some weird thing about like apartment K nine. Oh I no, don't... yeah. I guess I sh- that was. I guess I should have known you were a dog because you lived in apartment K nine. And Bernard's like, no, <laughs> and turns off. The that radio. was the song's name. Yes. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it's exasperating. <laughs> uh, I thought Bob Dylan had really think, long song names. Oh, oh, that's good. Is Waylon Waylon the guy who wrote that song? I believe so. I didn't hear wow. Waylon Waylon, but I did hear that part. <laughs> wow, wow. Guess I should have known you were a dog because you lived in, in apartment K nine. That's, and yeah, it's it's really with the with the, the with the twang and everything. I you know, I would like to listen to that song. Uh, me too. I feel like it might be related to Scratch Party in a way that I That's a joke for uh, nobody <laughs> except for Dylan. Hey, that's this podcast is that's for what no this, one yeah, except, except for Dylan. Except for us. <laughs> oh man. So then they do this dumb thing where Eugene, they're saying that they're coming up on something and Eugene does it in kilometers Mm -hmm. and then Bernard's like, can I have that in miles? And Mm -hmm. he does and it's obnoxious. Yeah. And um, then he doesn't understand the concept of stories. Mm -hmm. Oh, a narrative. (laughs) What? (laughs) I'm so sorry. I couldn't get the idea of a narrative from you saying, let's tell stories. And so we're going to, right, we're going to do like tall tales here. Mm -hmm. And Bernard starts out by making, saying that he, you know, he starts to tell a story about him and Eugene Mm -hmm. in the classic tall tale fashion, but it is interrupted by a guy behind them who is honking. Yeah. 
very loudly. Oh, Dylan, we've forgotten something. We oh, need no. a promo. Oh, my word, Andrew. <laughs> Here it comes now. <laughs> There's something strange in Arizona on the next Adventure in Odyssey. While Bernard begins weaving a tale of an unknown gold mine, a torn treasure map, and the greedy distrust of two traveling companions, he and Eugene find themselves trapped underground with no way of escape. Discover what happens next time on Adventures in Odyssey. Great music selection. The premise that he brings forth in that is false. Yeah. <laughs> that does seem just straight up wrong. <laughs> well, because one, he gives away... Like, it's definitely supposed to be a rug pull that this yeah. was all the story. Yeah, yeah. But he gives it away there by saying, like, you know, Bernard starts to weave a story about this gold mine. Mm-hmm. And then he says, but they find themselves in a cave. And I'm like... Those two things, one of the, like, both of those are the story or neither is. You can't yeah, have it yeah. both ways, narrator <laughs> man. Oh, yeah, I get it. You've got nice music, but you can't bend reality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. They, so, you, they start telling the story, as you said. Right. And, and uh, it gets interrupted by a guy behind them who is honking. He, like, swerves around them mm-hmm. and then, like, careens off the side of the road. Mm-hmm. Bernard calls in for help on his CB radio, mm-hmm. codename Window Washer. Love to see it. <laughs> which I do believe he reuses mm-hmm. yeah. in either Novacom or Blacker. There's some point at which he is, like, codename Window, window washer. washer. Yeah. Or maybe... Oh, is that when he steals the the laptop from Blackard? He steals the laptop from Blackard? Bernard? Yeah. Okay. I'll take your word for it. We, we had to cover that. <laughs> I no, know. we did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. We covered every episode that had Blackard in them. But, like, yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like I feel like it comes up. Yeah, like, for sure. And, and I'd um, love to see it. <laughs> right. And Some continuity. You know, there's, right, there's a hypothetical future in which we cover another episode that I believe includes that code name that we haven't covered. Whoop, whoop. So there's a tease for people out there. I might be wrong. He might not use the code name <laughs> in those episodes, but I think he does. I love vague anticipation. Uh huh. Um. And so yeah, they the Eugene runs to this guy mm-hmm. and he's talking about a, a river of gold. No, just listen. <laughs> and then he's like, it's, it's a river of gold. I'll be rich. <laughs> And he's talking all about uh, this underground river of gold, and he, he pulls out a map and tears it in half and says, this way, if you get it, you, you the only way you can get it is together. And, and when you get it, you gotta fix yourself up like kings and go back to the old neighborhood and say hi from the Smiler. Because <laughs> everybody loves a Smiler. <laughs> Great work, Andrew. <laughs> Thank no <notes>. you. <laughs> Thank you. Those years of smoking really paying off. I know, I know, in ways that I could... Well, actually, I definitely did anticipate. (laughs) I'm a fan of rock and roll. I knew this is what would happen. (laughs) So, the... This is a scene that is too intense for Odyssey. Yeah! No, it's insane! There's a man that basically dies on the side of the road after careening over the edge. And the car is, like, gonna blow Blow up. up. Yeah, like... They they pull him out of the car. Like, yeah, and then the engine catches on fire. Isn't that what Eugene says? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What the heck? (laughs) Yeah. Yep. And so for you... Did you feel like this was was this when you started to realize that it was a story? Oh no, I didn't realize until the reveal at the end. I wow, am <laughs> the, Phil Waller got me, and that's wow. part of my beef. <laughs> okay, this just did. <laughs> Dylan somehow hates Phil Waller even more. <laughs> For as many dumb things as I am able to catch in this show, mm-hmm. this one apparently just flew right by me. Call that good writing or bad writing. I don't care. No. Um, well, and I think that, okay, wasn't there an episode of the video series that we covered that was, like, loosely based on this one? So, we covered an episode of the video series that where, like, people are, where, like, Dylan is hanging on a rope in a cave. It's, like, the, it might be the last episode or the second to last one. It's when the, yeah. it's when Faustus returns. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It is 
the final set piece of this is very similar, similar. to that. The events leading up to that point are completely not. different. <laughs> um, but the set piece is definitely yeah. is definitely similar. Although I also feel like it's pretty bog standard as far as a set piece goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's my other thing. The this is an episode once again that ultimately comes out without any sort of a moral, mm-hmm. despite having one hanging in front of it. Well, I mean, like it, it, Bernard gives a little bit of a moral at the end. Yeah, but like not not really. <laughs> in, or I don't know. Maybe maybe my problem is just how. It feels so ham-fisted. Yeah, like that's the, fair. The moral seems to be separate from reality, which yeah. I guess is kind of I don't know. It. I'm trying to put my finger on what bugs me, but like so in this instance, the smiler doesn't give. Correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. but gives no context to why he wants them to work together. Yeah, no, there is there no is context. Plenty of room for mm-hmm. this to be a. I had a falling out with my partner. Yeah. All of this stuff. And we just don't. Mm -hmm. We don't get get it. it. Yeah. And maybe cut for time. Maybe yada yada. But still, it's not in the story and it needs to be. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, so why is he trying to make them work together? And why is he going so fast? Like Eugene points it out after the fact. Right. Right. And the, the piece that I will shine a light on here and if i had been like if i had really wanted to do my homework i would have like pre-prepared this Mm -hmm. but phil lawler writes explicitly in both the complete and official guides Mm -hmm. that he was doing these episodes as a quote-unquote tribute to it's a mad 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 world and a silent film called greed to the point where Renaday is doing an impression of a character from that when he is playing the Smiler. That makes so much sense. Yup. I think the... And I... Yeah, I think a lot of this episode's problem is that it is lifting from something else in an uninteresting and yeah. internally inconsistent way. Yeah. And I haven't seen it to understand that fully, mm-hmm. but like, but you can see, but like, right. When I, when I wa- listened to a Pokenberry Christmas for mm-hmm. years and years and years, and it just, it played very, very well. Yeah. And then I watched this, a wonderful life and was like, Oh, I understand what they're riffing on. But this thing plays well as its own episode. Exactly. I don't think that. I yeah. think that part of this episode's problem is that it is too much in service to content that people have not seen. Exactly. Yeah. And it also it probably has the effect as well of this being a this kind of a premise being something that has seeped into pop culture at large to where Mm -hmm. it's hard to recognize it as a specific reference to it's a mad, 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 mad world. Mm -hmm. And because there's a psych episode that Mm -hmm. functions exactly the same as this. There's so many like cartoons that do this thing. (laughs) Even the Odyssey cartoon Mm -hmm. does this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's a treasure hunt episode. Yeah. And it's, and Odyssey mm. does better treasure hunt episodes no, they do. than this. Yeah, but for sure. They, there is very little clues. Like even like Eugene we will says talk it. about Odyssey doing better treasure hunt episodes in, in this, this freaking <laughs> arc that yeah, we're covering. Exactly. Like it's just, yeah, I, I, I don't like this episode, guys. We'll get into it more as we go. It is full, the the only reason this episode works is that Will Ryan and Dave Madden are incredible voice actors and turn in excellent comedic performances. Just, yeah, top-notch A1 performances from both of them. If it's anybody else, if it's any other characters, no shame on Katie Lee, but if it's Connie and Wit, it's not nearly as good. Like, you need that... Right, you need the comedy chops that these guys have. You need have. the comedy chops and the contrast... 
and yeah, like Will Ryan's ability to hinge his voice from like exacerbated Eugene to exacerbated Eugene plus Mad Prospector. <laughs> yeah, and it's I, part of the toughness of this episode is that I think it works. I think it. I think there is a world the in which Foley is great too. I <laughs> will say that. <laughs> It is Lawler's writing hangs the Foley out to dry a couple times. Yeah. Where there is, it is unclear. You can tell the Foley artist is really working on it, but it is unclear anything that is going on in the scene because it's just so convoluted. And like, yeah. It, I think the version of this episode that works better is one that doesn't sell it out as a tall tale at the end. Exactly. I think that this episode breaks because it goes off the rails Mm -hmm. even if that is fun i think it ultimately works against it and i don't think it goes far enough Mm -hmm. like if you're trying to do wow this is crazy and off the rails there's maybe a better way to do it yeah well, and, and like, it, and a Eugene co- and Bernard are confronted with the idea of greed and, and all of that. Like, you could totally make that happen. Like, they could be driving behind a car that has a duffel bag full of money fall out of it. Like, yeah, or, like right. anything. Like, right, it, or, I, and I think part of it is, like, there are treasure hunt episodes of Odyssey that are real. Mm-hmm. This, and that's maybe part of why the episode could sucker me. Mm. is if I was watching a sitcom yeah. and this happened, I'd go, oh, this is a goof. Yeah, this is a story. But I am watching a show that tells these kinds of stories. Mm-hmm. A show that had, like, you know, that will go on to have, like, all the computer intrigue, archaeology crazy mm-hmm. antics. Yeah. Like, we're going to we're gonna redo, we're going to do Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. We're going to do James Bond. Like, yeah. we're going to do all this stuff. And it's part of the reality of the show. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't feel that far-fetched here. I just, what I want is at the very end of the episode is they just fall out of the Room of Consequences together. <laughs> right, right. Because it does it does eventually become a Room of Consequences We're episode. in a car, in a car, in a room. <laughs> yeah. The whole road trip was actually a Room of Consequences. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a great deep fake. <laughs> so, getting back on track, best mm-hmm. I can. Um... S- the the cop shows up and he's like, oh. oh no, they take him back to the police station. No, no, no but the police officer arrives. Oh. there, yeah, and like they are able to get them hauled off. They're all back at the police station. Eugene's like asking, like, hey, is this guy wanted for anything? <laughs> right, because there's this big debate of like, should they tell mm-hmm. the police about the gold nuggets? Mm-hmm. And they decide not to. And then they're like, is this guy wanted? And they're like, no, he's just like a local prospector who's like convinced yeah. of, of of stuff that isn't true. And they're like, great. And then we, Bernard, or like Eugene is like in the room as Bernard's out, like mm-hmm. going crazy, yeah. doing like science experiments to determine that it's real gold <laughs> and like trying to hide this from Bernard. Yeah. And yeah, he, it's just, it's hard to talk about an episode that is, that's and that the characters in it are real, mm-hmm. but that the story, story is not is fabricated. And yeah. it's like, so do I talk about how out of character this is? I guess not, no. because it's ultimately th- in character, right? Because it's automatic. It's ultimately a fictional account. Yeah, but like it does. Yeah, it just it just breaks it, and so. Mostly I'm mad at Phil because he's making me talk about this one and I don't know how to. Um, <laughs> Another reason. But yeah, Eugene's... The anger <laughs> increases. Eugene's trying to see Bernard's half of the map and yep. there's, you know, Bernard stumbles on the fact that he was doing all this experiment on the gold and Eugene's like, yep, it is in fact real. And then they're like, well, you know, we should, you know, give it a shot first thing tomorrow morning of to like put our maps together and yeah. go find this info. And then like... Bernard's the first to fall asleep at 2 a.m. And Eugene's like, aha, I'm going to get it. He, like, tries to steal the map. Mm-hmm. And then Bernard, Bernard reveals he was faking. And he catches Eugene. Yeah. And then, like, 
they are like, okay, well, let's work together. But he slips something into Eugene's water. Yeah, so Eugene passes out while they're discussing how they're going to solve this as reasonable adults. Right. Then Bernard takes I both did. halves of the map and makes a run for it. And to my credit, while I didn't catch this was all a dream, I did go, Bernard just slipped something in Eugene's water when he <laughs> offers Eugene water. Yeah. And yeah, then, no. So And I, this is the first point then at my note where I'm like, oh, this is so heightened. Yeah, yeah. This is ridiculous. This and is I'm, absurd. Right. And I'm more like part part of the other problem is I don't trust Phil to write characters well. And so I'm like Fair. <laughs> this man is just like someone didn't reel in Phil on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody phil actually thought that bernard would do this <laughs> right because then right bernard has like a maniacal laugh yeah no it's absurd and yeah, absurd is is the the word to describe all of what happens in yeah. this episode the voice acting all of it is so heightened and um larger than life and you know plays into the whole folklore thing that bernard was talking about earlier but again it just kind of comes across as bad writing yeah and then, right, and then we end up in the cave, which is, I think, yep. where the, wow, the sound effects in the cave are good. Yeah. The entire, the entirety of this episode breaks down because yeah. I cannot picture what is happening here. Yeah. yeah. There is just, like, a lot of futzing around they at some point. Like, ledge that they're Eugene's going down. hanging on a rope. But, yeah. like, none of it, it, it is, like, textbook Lawler's telling rather than showing. showing yeah yeah where it's like mccusker seems to better understand the audio medium mm -hmm. and builds it into the text of the show in a more natural way yeah. where phil's just like give me that and, rope <laughs> right and part of this i assume is because they are riffing on a movie yeah yeah and so they can't just make it imagine like they can't yeah build it around the fact that they're audio they're trying to communicate something visual Visually. in audio Which and just yeah. falling flat on their face like it's yeah and so there's this whole like yeah bernard stumbling around the cave he finds the gold nuggets he's mm -hmm. th you know thrilled eugene shows up mm -hmm. he reveals that he's like purchased the mm -hmm. cave and yeah. then bernard's like no you just purchased the cave's entrance yeah and this, then this river is still unclaimed and then they race to get up the rope and then right eugene gets the top goes like oh youth prevails again and then bernard pulls him down eugene gets hurt right and, and then eugene's like well or bernard's like you know i'll help you out if you sign over the, the claim yeah and eugene's like well i i don't why why i don't even have a claim to the cave and he's, bernard's like well it is the only way in yeah and then eugene's like he signs it but then he handcuffs himself to bernard yeah he says come over here <laughs> yeah yeah and so as soon as bernard comes over to get the piece of paper from him he gets handcuffed and right then eugene dies <laughs> right and like what <laughs> yep and it's all a story about greed and yeah and it's all a story greed about will greed. cause a rift between people mm -hmm. and at no point is it like at no point during the story is it at all fleshed out mm -hmm. what Eugene and Bernard desire or why this is, like, tension and whatnot. Like, it mm -hmm. is just, it's so, it's so, like, base level un, like, like, none of, the, neither of their characters have any motivations within the story. Yeah, exactly. Other than getting Other than gold getting the gold <laughs> yeah, but it's like but we something... don't understand why they wouldn't just work together from the first exactly especially since they've been going on this road trip and they've been growing as friends yeah. and whatever yeah and yeah it's because it was all a story and bernard i guess is bad at telling stories <laughs> <laughs> despite several bernard and episodes and btv proving otherwise yeah yeah he i mean they can't all be winners i suppose right yeah. Not all my jokes are funny, so Bernard can't. This show is great evidence of that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If you want to sue me, Chalk Squad, I think you might be within your rights. <sighs> but I am but poor. Yeah. Won't be able to pay. And then, right, Eugene starts poking holes mm. in Bernard's story. Yeah. 
being like, why would the, you know, why would the Eugene character have handcuffs and why would, um, the smile, uh, smiler be driving so fast right. if he knows that nobody else knows. Yep. And, and all of this. Phil explains in the official guide mm-hmm. that all of those were notes given to him by the team when he handed in the script. <laughs> That's incredible. I love that. Yep. And he was just like, well, this is, <laughs> you know, it's a story in a story. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to hang a lantern on it. Yeah. And we're just going to go like, yeah. Ha ha. Ah, look, we're poking. Story. Right. Like, yeah. look, isn't the story that I wrote so flawed? And ridiculous. Thank goodness yeah. we published it and sold it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's just, and then, right. And then the episode does end on like a f- kind of fun note where we get a repeat of mm-hmm. the start of the episode yep. but this time the guy doesn't swerve off the edge of yeah. the road he recovers yeah and eugene and bernard decide not to stop in four corners yeah yeah they're like ah oh, if it's all the same to you we'll pass and bernard's like yeah yeah let's not um and it is kind of kind of fun i guess <laughs> yeah it my my problem with this episode is that it feels like missed potential exactly yeah. i would love to see the I would love to see the even crazier version of it. Mm-hmm. I would love to see the very grounded, yeah. like this is what's actually happening version of it. I also think that the episode would probably work better for me if you had Will Ryan mm-hmm. and Dave Madden playing characters who weren't Bernard and Eugene in the yeah, middle exactly. section. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That were intentional riffs on them, but if they were like Bernie and Hubert or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like, if they did something like that. Yeah. Where... Brian and Eustace. <laughs> where they just, like, took weird name like they took different names they were like hey we're gonna do something different and then they could really play up how the craziness of these characters and then but the the episode is like this weird middle ground that can't quite figure out how to operate well because it's it it, i feel like it painted itself into a corner where it's like we're trying to tell this heightened story using familiar characters but these familiar characters are bound in a lot of ways right and we want the rug pull at the end yeah which i can respect because it got you (laughs) right no it got me and i think that there's a way that that rug pull could be fun yeah it just yeah it just didn't i don't know yeah it's just an episode that fell a little flat for me in a lot of different ways yeah i agree i there was there was a lot of it that i did like just in the craziness of like bernard slipping sleeping powder into eugene's drink and and the you're not getting tired. No, you're not getting tired. Right. Blah blah blah. Like that. Those, those are okay, fun little yeah. moments that that I remember. But no, just the way that the episode flows from beginning to end, the repeat and all of that. Like that. Yeah. yeah. It's just missed. You're you're right. It's just missed potential. And I will once again say the same thing I did for the la- for the previous two episodes, which is, I think it is probably. May, or the my experience mm-hmm. with the episode is definitely made worse by the fact that I am taking notes and then have to record a podcast about it. Yeah, of course. If I was on a road trip and this episode came on, I would probably have a fun time and mm-hmm. then just move on to the next exactly. episode. Yeah. But because I have to sit down here and, and talk. talk about it for an hour, <laughs> yeah. I am just upset by it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, like you said, it's an incredible missed opportunity in pretty much every aspect of what they wanted or could have done with this like it could have been a cool crossover it could have been this could have been that and what we got is really just some first first draft uh notes included lawler script right right and i yeah i just i wish it yeah i i wish it was better but jock squad we need to band together and sue phil lawler not me Look, startachange.org petition to have Phil Waller fired and replaced by us as the showrunners for Odyssey. This will cause no issues and is definitely something that we can do. Oh, yeah. I'll I'll be great, honestly. I've got so much experience. Yeah, I'm such a great script writer. Yeah, I do be writing scripts um, all the time. Yeah. 
Like actual pitch. Get a get friend of the show AJ Diddy to seriously to write a script. Seriously, I mean, yeah, Andrew Taven made good good comedy writing. Mm-hmm. I yeah. really enjoy Sound Snacks. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, like, look, we have so many glorious guests. I know they're so they're all so pretty. I'm really astonished with how pretty all of them are. <laughs> Come on the show if you're pretty. If you're not, stay away. <laughs> the views of Andrew Saban do not reflect the views of the Wad Fam Chalkpot. <laughs> Dylan's just lonely. Look, I, yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, I am not going to pitch myself to single listeners of the show. <laughs> oh, my, my DMs are closed. Most, yeah, my DMs are non existent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh I, um... Yeah, Chalk Squad, you're gonna have to email us. Um, there's no other way. We can't do it anymore. <laughs> no, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still on, uh, you know... On the, on the gram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm available enough. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's my goal. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, um, no, I think, uh, I think I've said everything I have to say about this episode. I, I like the... Yeah, the voice acting, like, of Dave Madden and Will Ryan when they really full send it into, like, crazy, greedy prospector mode is, like, really fun and funny, and I like that. Yeah. Um, And some of the music was cool, but, again, yeah, there were so many situations of, like, what even is happening? What are they trying to explain as happening based off this dialogue? Um, What about you? Do you got any closing thoughts perhaps plugs i i don't think i've got closing thoughts i i don't have plugs of my own other than i guess right reiterating i don't know if we've i think we've talked about on the show but i'm not like actively on twitter anymore although Mm -hmm. i still am like keeping up with the podcasts page Mm -hmm. um but yeah uh tweet at us i guess but email us at wildfamchalkpod for sure com is like is definitely my big yeah my big if recommend if you want to talk about something be heard but uh but yeah instagram dms are open and those do get checked mm-hmm. uh with regularity uh my other i i'm going to yeah what what we're, we're gonna plug uh blood simple it's uh, the Coen Brothers' first movie. Okay. Came out in the mid '80s. Okay. I watched it with uh, past and future guest Brendan Asabo. Love to it see is it. Uh, such a good time, and you know, is it correlated with this episode? Not closely, <laughs> but you know, it's it's comedy, um, and it's and and there's you know greed involved, and oh, it is, it's so freaking good, um stupendous andrew what do you what do you have happening oh goodness not not a whole lot um you know what you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna butt in with too is Mm. uh if if you're you know it's been a while since i've plugged this and i just talked about the social media i'm not on social media i am on uh letterbox letterbox yeah please follow me on letterbox i actually if you do like i will totally follow you back i'm always looking for more people um, I love, yeah, I, yeah. I, I love following people's, yeah, their filmography. What are they, what are people watching? What are people mm-hmm. enjoying and thinking yeah. about it? Yeah, I'm DJ Weaver 29 on Letterboxd, and there will, of course, just, be a link in the description. Yeah, but. Andrew Asabo, so there you go. <sighs> so sorry. I know. It and hurts. that's why my identity will be stolen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm going to plug uh, The Last of Us. Pedro Pascal. I'll plug that gentleman. Mm. Um, I'm not alone in this. He's he's doing pretty well for himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, big big fan of that guy. He's done a lot of cool stuff recently, and hopefully, I mean, he seems like a pretty genuine, down to earth dude. So like, I'm I'm hoping that this doesn't become like the beginning of the end for his decency. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, catch Andrew plugging that gentleman. <laughs> But I would much rather be plugged by that gentleman. <laughs> Great. Was that not the joke you were making? No, that was absolutely okay. <laughs> the joke I was making, Andrew. Um, and with all that being said, we will be back next week with The Fifth House on the Left, Part 1. Bye, guys. Bye. Wadfam Chalk Pod is a presentation of the Lidditz Podcast Co-op. 
This show is a fan podcast and has no official affiliation with Adventures in Odyssey or Focus on the Family. As such, the copyright is ours under Creative Commons. Follow the podcast at WadFamChalkPod on Twitter and Instagram, or email us at WadFamChalkPod at gmail.com. It Happened at Four Corners was hosted by Dylan Weaver and Andrew Sabo, and edited by Dylan Weaver. And I'm Nathan Haverstick, hoping you'll join us again next time for more of the Wad Fam Chalk Pod.